welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, but more importantly, welcome to another Q&A video. Today we have a very special guest, we have DJ Chino. Say what's, what's up, up, bro. What's up, what's going DJ on? DJ Chino is a DJ, what do you represent? You want to say you represent Philly, Jersey? Yeah, definitely Philly and, and, the, and the New Jersey area. We're going to answer some of the questions that you guys sent in on Snapchat and Instagram. And as always, if you're not doing so, you should definitely follow me on Snapchat and Instagram so that you can be up to date whenever we do these Q&A videos. Let's talk about DJ Chino, the star of today's vlog. So tell them when you started, what you do, where you spin, what you like to spin, things like that. So um, basically I um, started in the, in the garage. What kind of equipment did you start out with? Start off with some Gemini stuff. Definitely started with the most basic equipment and you know, you work your way up. What year did you start? I started man, mid early 90s. You were there with the CD scene. And CD everything. scene, I was So you were there when like the laptop was introduced? When the laptop came in, I, I, I was like this. I didn't want to hear about no laptop. I right. was you were like, one of those, oh, that's never going to catch yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was totally against it. I saw from the beginning that technology would actually take away from the DJ. For me, like one of the dopest things is like cueing your music, manually cueing it, and uh, definitely collecting music. You know, nowadays you can just get on the internet yeah. and download gigs of music and just be handed yeah, back see, then. When, going to like record shops. Yeah, that was the thing. That yeah. was people used to hang out and that's where you met DJs. Dude, and you would find gems, shop. gems yeah. that no one was playing. I remember buying a CD, spending like 15 bucks and only getting like two songs out of it. Yeah. I started when the controller started coming out. So I started on a little controller. You guys have seen that video that I made on that little controller. And people used to clown me because I had controllers. And now it's crazy that we've come full circle because now you walk into anywhere, most likely you're gonna find a Pioneer controller. Mm -hmm. I was on Virtual DJ and I made a video actually on it. A lot of these guys are like equipment doesn't matter. And, and I agree to a certain extent, but in the club world, you wanna say Serato rules, yes Absolutely. or no? Absolutely. Tell you one story. Uh, so I had booked this DJ <laughs> to come spin at this club and he opens his laptop and he pulls out virtual DJ and I didn't let him spin. Yeah. I really didn't let him spin because the fact that uh, you get to a certain level where there is a standard in, in equipment and in software and he probably could have been the best DJ but yeah. virtual DJ with 500, 600 people spinning up. If the club is already set up to rock on Serato, to mm -hmm. be on Serato, you can't show up and start unplug and stuff Absolutely. in the middle of the night. You should be able to walk in into a venue and spin with what they have. If you want to do clubs, you have to be versatile because you don't know what you're going to walk into. Absolutely. Did you start doing like mobile gigs or did you start going into clubs? With my school, like doing the dances over there, doing any uh, culture. Oh, you did school dances yeah, and stuff? I, I How'd you like that? I loved it, man. How'd you get into the nightclub world? Nightclub world, well, uh, my mentor, DJ Ty, by the way, Props to you, man. He he just schooled me, man. He took me yeah. under his wings, and he would take me to do the private parties. I didn't even know how to set up most of this equipment. Yeah. I mean, he would have like four amps, amps. compressor, equalizers. He had the old yeah. school rigs. He would put me on. I would be like his roadie, yeah. and I would have to help him carry these speakers, connect all this stuff, and then open up for him. You have to do some of the heavy work in the beginning. Don't just think that you're gonna get in a nightclub yeah. and start rocking. You're not gonna headline. No, you're gonna, you're gonna thing, be playing when nobody's there. If you're, if you're just starting and take time to learn the basic of like how to connect this equipment, how to troubleshoot this stuff. What's a good opener DJ for you? Because if you're just getting started in the nightclub world, you gotta open. You're you're not gonna be headlining. There's been some instances too where they'll throw you on late, late in the night, like last set, because mm -hmm. last set is usually pretty weak too. You know, I don't want to say that there's rules, but there are some dudes from rules. You do have to respect your opener. Like, don't go in there and play <laughs> the bangers. Don't go in there and try to outshine. Good thing. Be unique. Be be creative. A good opener is supposed to open up nicely for the for the yeah. prime DJ. Whereas if uh, a lot of these openers have an ego thing where they get put on and they just want to go ahead and outshine the the, the the headliner and that's not that's not good don't play the hits that he might play especially if he produced the song don't go and play it. like you know if you're yeah. opening for DJ Khaled for example don't go ahead and play his yeah his tracks like I told you guys we got some questions so we're gonna get into those right now you ready to do this yeah what's the best way to market yourself and get into clubs that's a good question definitely use social media to your advantage I would yeah. almost say document every time you're gonna do a, a home session yeah. a bedroom session record it. It allows what you to see where out. you messed up too. Yeah. It'll make you better. Even with these videos, if it's helped my speech, it's helped a lot of things because I notice quirky things that we don't mm -hmm. notice about mm -hmm. ourselves. And then when you watch it back, it's like, okay, this is some places where I can improve on. A lot of the reasons that a lot of people fail in general is because they're not ready for the, for the opportunity. Have some kind of media with you, whether it's a USB, a Dropbox ready to go, where you can easily hand over some of your, your material over to the club owners, to the promoter, to the DJ that's there. I feel like a lot of it is connections too. And 
and I've said this before, so like about who you know. I've been booking situations at clubs used to have to book DJs. Mm -hmm. I fell into the same little bubble. I would gravitate, oh, let me grab one of the radio guys. Mm -hmm. I know those guys are good. So there is like a sense of you want somebody with a status, not necessarily how good they are, because honestly, there's a lot of guys that aren't necessarily the world's greatest DJ, but they have them. They have the marketing there. Mm -hmm. When I first started, it was no marketing. You were booked simply on your skills. You had to be able to rock a club, rock a crowd. Nowadays, it's all about the hype, how many numbers you have, how many followers, this and that. I would still say to any DJ or anyone who's trying to learn how to DJ, master the skill, master your equipment. That's gonna outlast any numbers, any ratings. How do you establish a relationship with promoters and how do you usually get paid? When you're first starting out, they're gonna hit you with this thing called gas money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got you with some gas money. <laughs> if you like a club, you should follow them. You should do the basic things, follow them, see what, what the club is doing. Kind of educate yourself on the club a little bit. I normally show up to a club two to three times before yeah, I try to Yeah, show up a couple of times, just let your face be seen and it'll happen organically. Hey man, what's up? So what are you doing? Oh, you know I'm actually a DJ mm -hmm. too. That's how it starts. When you show up to the club, first time you've never been there you go up to the DJ and say hey I'm a DJ I'm like, I know what this guy wants mm -hmm. I, I mean know. trust me that DJ <laughs> gets hit every weekend with other mm -hmm. DJs trying to get put on what's gonna make you stand out what's gonna make this DJ say like yo there's something cool about this guy whatever the case is share music share share ideas <laughs> you know give your input give your feedback tell the DJ like yo you ripped it you killed it contribute to, to whatever is going on in, in the scene in the night don't just go in there and just try to get booked yeah, because um, it ain't gonna not. happen. What's your networking process? That's a good question going on the other one. What do you do to far, as far as networking? Definitely gotta get out. You gotta get out the bedroom, you gotta get out the basement. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of little communities and little pockets of DJs that gather on weekdays to do jam sessions. Um, you know, I'm constantly hitting up bar. Yo, bar, let's let's link up, let's 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 catch up. Um, we both have busy lives and busy schedules, but that's a yeah. part of your job these days is to network, to get out and again hit the promoters up, support the DJs. If there's a DJ that you're a yeah. fan of and he plays in your neighborhood, yeah. go check him out. Yeah, you if, know, if anything, hang out with you should go to a nightclub, find out who the DJ is and not say anything to him and hit him up on like Facebook or something right. and be like, yo, you rocked it, right. dude. We should hang out sometime. Don't even say that you're a DJ. Don't don't have like any crazy motives and just see if you guys buy. If you go to DJ club, do you hate DJing on controllers? What do you like to spend on at a club? When I used to DJ clubs, if I saw some CDJs and a DJM 800, I was like, Mm -hmm. What do you like to see at club? Well, CDJs are always going to be standard equipment. Shout out to DJ Mad. DJ Mad once told a nightclub uh, that they're not a professional nightclub because they didn't have turntables. And that's a fact. I mean, most dope DJs, like big prime DJs, are going to request either CDJs or turntables. So I think standard club equipment is either going to be CDJs, Pioneer Mixer, or Rain Mixer, or some turntables, and, and a controller, a nice controller. The SE, I go to most nightclubs, and they pretty much have that nowadays. Yeah. They got rid of CDJs. Yeah, a lot of places have that. Yeah. Some Something along that line, I think, is yeah. standard. A lot of DJs, they tell you what you have to have in order for them to come. Yeah. Props to those Press guys it. when you get to that level. You gotta have this, this, and that, or else I ain't playing. What's your music style? Music style, so I'm Latin. So anything Latin is gonna move me. I love rhythms, I love yeah. grooves. And that's something that will, that makes me stand out, at least when I spin, is that I could be playing hip hop and I don't know, I'm throwing Latin rhythms on you. Yeah, um, you always see like the Latin songs, they break into the American market so easy. This year alone, we had two massive ones. That's Pasito, that was the biggest that broke record. Records, that yeah. was the biggest one last year. And as much as people them. hate it, it was a hit. Well, they hate they it because it's being played everywhere and everywhere. Yeah, but it, they knocked it out of the park. What equipment do you own? CDJs, 1000s, I, I think the older oh, ones. 1000s. I have that. I also <laughs> own a pair of turntables, uh, the Techniques MK5G. I own an Allen Heave Zone 92, which is uh, a mixer that I use specifically for electronic music. And then, of course, I have the DDJ SZ that I use for private events. It's just so cool. Yeah, you got a lot of equipment. I have a lot of equipment. I, have a <laughs> I didn't realize you had so much equipment. Damn. Yeah. So you got CDJs, you got turntables, and a, a controller. Yep, yep. Damn, you got the hat trick. What do you do when people aren't dancing to your music? When you're playing hit after hit and nobody comes out and dances it? Good question. Uh, hit the reset button. So sometimes you can go back to the classics. Switch it up. Sometimes just break in the rhythm. Sometimes you can go to nightclubs and you and you feel like you're listening to the same music yeah. over and over again. Just the top song. Don't be scared of digging your crates. Don't be scared to get that song that transports you back into time. Once you see people are catching on to, to that, then yeah. you, you ride that wave. So my process, at the start of the night, I just see if people are grooving and I kind of get like a feel of like, mm -hmm. all right, I think they're grooving to that. Maybe they'll like this and that. Sometimes I fall into where I want to stereotype too. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a common thing for DJs. I'm like, all right, there's some Dominicans over there. Let me play some Dumbo. They'll mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
fuck with that. <laughs> if you're playing the whole night, use the beginning of the night to figure out what's, what's in front of you. So yeah. I jump through genres. I'm going through like, I'll play two songs of something of a certain genre and then I'll jump to another genre. See what's sticking. As a DJ, it's not just technical. You have to learn how to read crowd. You have to learn how to be able to just jump from genres, eras, you know, have a 90s crates, have an early 2000 crates, have a, a, a new crate. And then that way you're not just stuck playing all the new hits and then you don't know how to go back into time. Be like a time machine. Be able to transport people to different emotions and different sounds and different yeah. eras, man. Be versatile. Have different tools in your belt. If you have, if you're playing hit after hit and they're just not vibing to it, don't be afraid to take risks mm -hmm. because I mean, you're already losing. So what, what's the worst that can happen? You're gonna lose some more. Mm -hmm. I did a party not too long ago where I was just, you know, I was dropping hits after hits. I'm like, man, these people aren't vibing to anything. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I like Smash music. So I'm like, whatever, they're not gonna dance. So I'm gonna play some Spanish music. Mm -hmm. It was, there was no Spanish people there they at all. Loved, they loved it. I start playing some Spanish music, dude, dance floor gets packed. And I was just gonna play it because I'm, I had given up on them. Right. I was like, man, they don't wanna dance <laughs> I, I give up, I'm gonna play whatever I wanna listen to. Where do you get your music from? Where do I get my music from again? Online, most of it is online. I, I These days I pay for the majority of my music. When you start DJing a lot, you start noticing the quality of music. So yeah. people ask me, why don't you just get it off YouTube for free? I, it's like, fine, I, I, could, I could do that. But the thing is, when you start training your ear, you know it sounds shitty. To untrained people, it might not not sound shitty but when you DJ a lot you know what's like a 320 song Absolutely. and you know how it hits you you just you know how crisp a song is when it's legit when you download it off YouTube I know people say it, it's not the same quality and some of you guys probably don't believe me even if it says HQ high quality mm -hmm. it's not high quality you get what you pay for if you're constantly ripping music you know that's the kind of DJ that you're gonna eventually develop it's yep. just a cheap DJ you know you have to pay for your music support the artist hop on a record pull man Rock there's hop. hundreds of them absolutely um, Pro yeah. Latin Remix is a good one for Latinos if you definitely want to have some good edits. Mm -hmm. You have uh, the basics of uh, Crook and Clan, yeah. BPM Supreme, I mean the list goes on. DJ, DJ City, mm -hmm. shout out to DJ City. Honestly, you gotta you gotta pay for it. <laughs> I was reading this book, it wasn't necessarily about DJing, it was about marketing. But it's like if you half-ass yourself, you're gonna get half-ass customers. Favorite mixer? Pioneer uh, DJ M800. It's a classic mixer. Oh, that's what's right back there. It's a classic mixer, it's got great effects, super durable. Great organization. How do you organize your crates? I used to organize mine by genre, and I still do do by genre, but I've been seeing a lot of guys, they do like little sets. So I'm like, oh, this was a great set. So they saved that set. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I started getting into. I'm definitely gonna say by genre. Start off by genre. I got to a point where I was just getting so much music of these record pools. Mm -hmm. I had so much, I didn't know what to do with it. On Serato, you can assign colors to it. So I would assign it a color. So I know that that's my go-to version for mm -hmm. that particular song. Even then, I started getting a lot of versions for like, you know, a big band. Right. So I just started making like my little crates. Okay, this is this is these all go great together. So I right. dropped them into one crate. Uh, I break them down by genres, and now I'm uh. beginning to break them down by year. Again, if you wanna, as a DJ, I think is is a cool thing when you can be like a time machine, when you could take people back to a certain time. You know, you, you have like a '90s crate, you have an '80s crate, a '70s crate, early 2000 crate. By genres, by decades, by years, and then um, another thing is aside, like just another key, uh, another point to that is um, no. Know your music. Do your homework at home. Know what you're, what you have in your crates. Don't just be that guy that downloads gigs of gigs of music and you have no idea what do you have, how to play. It. Quality over quantity. You gotta you, study your stuff. Yeah. You gotta study your stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. um, and then having playlists is a great thing. You know, like. Uh, I, I personally don't use playlists. I, every time I spend, I spend. See, it I, I used of my to. Head. I used to do that off the top of my head too. But then I started mixing up. Like I would do, and I'm just doing it now on my channel. So you would see me do like five Spanish events back to back to back. So then I'm like, all right, I got it back down. I got my Spanish, mm -hmm. and then I'll just get thrown a curveball. I get thrown like you know an all American party, and I'm like, I deal with so many different genres that I. Uh, it's sometimes it's hard for me to think on my toes. I'm like, what's the name of that song? What's the name of that song? What's the name of that song? <laughs> so quality, started, quality, quality over quantity all day. Uh, I'd rather have less music but have a good chunk of it, quality stuff, than have a computer just packed to the brim with music where I don't even know what I'm looking for. All right. Any last and final words for the DJs out there? Words of wisdom, words of advice, anything? Yeah, for sure. Again, it goes back to doing your homework. While you're home, take the time to organize your files, organize your crates. Put in the time technically on your equipment. Know your equipment. Practice your MC game. There's no such thing as just DJing. You have to be able to MC. You have to be able to engage into this crowd. Whatever's put in front of you, you need to move them. That's your job. That's what you're getting paid for. Don't just think, oh, I, I, you know, I have a fresh haircut. I have cool gear. I have a new... 
uh, laptop, I'm saying no. At the end of the day, you don't even have to mix, but if you know how to MC and be versatile, yeah. MC is huge. You gotta hype up the crowd. It starts at home for me, I think, yeah. most of it. All right. DJ Chino, thank you so much for coming through and My doing this Q&A with you, brother, me. Brother, no man. problem. DJ hey. Chino is a DJ's DJ. <laughs> he loves the art, man. So these are the kind of guys you want to talk to. It's nice to sit down with guys like DJ Chino who love, generally love the art of it, the whole culture that is DJing. He embraces that. So it's always dope hanging out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to like it, subscribe if you're new around here. Yeah, buddy. And and if you really want to help us out, don't forget to turn up that bell. Stay awesome, bros. Peace.